Happy Tuesday, everybody. Oh, I love every one of you. Almost too much. All right, let's get started. Dylan Mulvaney is trying to switch from transgender influencer to stand-up comic. After the Budweiser fiasco, you gotta admit, that takes balls. <laughs> I know where this is going. A government sponsored report says the country should move quickly to prevent artificial intelligence from making humanity extinct, which is why I've created a robot that pokes holes in condoms. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> stupid. <laughs> but the U.S. State Department paints an alarming, alarming picture of the catastrophic national security risks posed by rapidly evolving AI. But one man says, I wouldn't worry too much about it. <laughs> <laughs> New research found that 74% of teens feel happy when they don't have their smartphones on hand. The other 26% are tied to a workbench in Beijing and work for Apple. <laughs> yes, makes you think. Four astronauts return to Earth with SpaceX on Tuesday to end a half-year mission at the International Space Station. They say they would have been back sooner, but the chick on board had to stop 43 times to pee. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's great. That's great. A new special counsel <laughs> investigation reports that Biden kept forgetting what a fax machine was. Huh. Well, he always had a problem with fax. <laughs> a little wordplay. Very little. According to research, 47% of American parents still feel financially support their adult children, while certain adult children financially aid their parents. A Boeing whistleblower who warned of aircraft safety laws has been found dead in South Carolina. He was last seen alive having dinner with this lady. <laughs> Florida lawmakers have voted to raise the minimum age for strippers to 21, except at the villages where stripper minimum age remains 75. <laughs> Female spring breakers are fighting more and more, including a massive brawl this week in Fort Lauderdale. So what were they fighting over? Hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hairless. There's no hair in it. Yeah, I'm quite hairless. <laughs> Police in New Orleans say rats have eaten all the marijuana in their evidence room. As for the missing cash, jewelry, and AK 47s, they say the rats ate that too. <laughs> According to the FAA, Boeing mechanics were using hotel key cards as makeshift tools. But they didn't work, so they had to keep going back to the front desk. <laughs> I thought that would work. Uh, mail carrier robberies have once again increased dramatically this year. I guess that means somebody else is masturbating to my Harry and David catalog. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that one. <laughs> Thank you, Emily. A Ukrainian strongman set a world record by using his beard to pull a 5,687-pound minibus, which broke the record set by the previous champion. <laughs> All right, let's do a monologue. They called a kid racist, so their bosses said, replace it. Good news for people who love sports but hate douchebags. The lefty sports site Deadspin just canned its entire staff after being sold by its parent company. Now, I'm guessing most of you never read Deadspin, but surely you remember the story of how they smeared a nine-year-old Kansas City Chiefs fan, Holden Armenta. A few months ago, his parents took him to see the Chiefs play the Las Vegas Raiders. Here's what he wore to the game. Yeah, nothing unusual for an NFL game or for dinner at Liz Warren's. <laughs> People dress up and put on face paint all the time. He seems like a, a good kid and was obviously enjoying himself. So, of course, Deadspin's hacks had to put a stop to that because the left can't stand a child enjoying anything other than a drag queen lap dance. Roll the recap, recap roller. A hack at sports site Deadspin alleged that a child with his face painted in his football team colors was actually blackface. The scumbag writer had to face the new community notes function of Elon Musk's ex. 
In record time, community notes showed the kid's full photo, not just the half painted black. But for whitey hater Karen Phillips, who just made himself the Jesse Smollett of sports journalism, it didn't matter. Phillips added that, quote, this is what happens when you ban books, stand against critical race theory, and try to erase centuries of hate. You give future generations the ammunition they need to evolve and recreate racism better than before. A young kid wearing his favorite team colors recreates racism better than before? And accusing a child of that is how you're erasing hate, Karen? F you! <laughs> So they decided to defame a third grader for having fun at a football game. But sensing that momentum had finally shifted against these woke witch trials, Karen's bosses quickly removed the photo and added a mealy-mouthed apology. They said, we regret any suggestion that we were attacking the fan. It was suggestive? No, when Kudlow answers the door wearing lingerie, that's suggestive. <laughs> but when your writer says a young fan found a way to hate black people and the Native Americans at the same time, you're not suggesting you're defaming the very people who make the sports you cover possible. But it got worse for dead spit in their deadbeat writer. A few months later, this happened. But now that nine-year-old boy's family is suing Deadspin for maliciously and wantonly attacking the child, alleging Deadspin's race-drenched political agenda. And the story's even more hilarious in that the kid is also a member of the Chumash tribe. My only hope is that little Chief's fan gets enough money to buy Deadspin and turn it into a pickleball court. <laughs> well, it turns out my prediction about this kid getting rich off it might actually happen. Because now with the sale of Deadspin, they got an infusion of cash to pay the kid for when he wins the lawsuit. So maybe he can hang out with Nick Sandman on their private yacht. <laughs> so ju justice, all right, I'll take it. Thank you. I'm the real hero. <laughs> so justice prevailed and Deadspin was dropped like Leo DiCaprio's girlfriend on her 25th birthday. <laughs> The journalism world hasn't taken a hit like this since Kilmeade's last book on Warren Harding's chronic halitosis. Oh. As for the future of Deadspin, the parent company says, quote, the new owners plan to take a different content approach regarding the site's overall sports coverage. Okay, well, here's a different approach. Try the truth. I know it's a crazy idea, but who knows? Give it a shot. It will feel weird at first, but like a vibrating butt plug, you'll get used to it. <laughs> So I've heard. <laughs> That's what they tell me. But Deadspin is just the latest news outlet to experience layoffs. After Vice, BuzzFeed, The Feminist Crap Fest, Jezebel, Messenger, Time Magazine, Business Insider, and probably a bunch of other places that didn't produce any journalism that anybody cared about. It's what killed Sports Illustrated, which used to be an institution before becoming a mental institution dedicated to punishing the men who make up their core audience with swimsuit models who need extra room to hide their weenies. You might as well dump ice-cold Gatorade in our undies. But the story here is about how the left's finally learning that hit pieces on regular people is no replacement for content. It may please losers on X, but it makes you a terrible person. Deadspin around and found out what every pro athlete knows. If you stink at your job, you won't have it for long. Though there are a few rare exceptions, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so let's close things out with some wisdom from Dave Portnoy, who knows a thing or two about running a successful sports site. To Deadspin, everybody getting fired again. Those <laughs> just don't get it. Yeah. Being miserable, hating life, Never laughing. It's never going to pay the bills. See you on the employment line again. <laughs> and that's the moral of the story. Making up lies to anger people can generate some quick web traffic, but hate clicks are not a business plan. And when you lie to people and insult them for noticing that you're lying, they tend to go away. People watch and read about sports for entertainment, not lectures. It's the same reason they drink beer, watch movies, and go about their lives like normal humans. And if you keep telling them they're racist, sexist monsters, they're going to take their business elsewhere. Meanwhile, what about the author, Karen, of the repulsive Deadspin article? Well, he was named in the lawsuit, and he was one of the writers who got fired. He's already updated his profile pic on LinkedIn to say, open to work. <laughs> 
But hey, if he wants to continue to falsely accuse white people of racism, he can always work at MSNBC. Let's welcome tonight's guest. He likes his women like he likes his comedy. Dark. Comedian Joe Mackey. She talks so fast her words get carsick. Outnumbered co-host Emily Campagno. This Jesus also has a lot of followers, so don't make him cross. Host of the Grid Report, Hotep Jesus. And her idea of gaining weight is putting on more hair. New York Times bestselling author and Fox News contributor, Captain. Mackie, a lot of people don't realize that you were once a professional athlete. You were, uh, uh, I don't know what you were, but you were an athlete. Well, I, some people don't comp consider bodybuilding really a professional athlete, <laughs> but yeah, I guess so. For... Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, are you glad that Deadspin is now dead? I'm going to withhold judgment because Deadspin was bought by a European company, mm. and Europe plus sports, Greg, mm -hmm. often equals soccer. <laughs> and personally, I would rather be smeared as a racist than... <laughs> Endure a four hour long zero zero tie. <laughs> I mean, what do I care if people call me racist? I have a lot of black acquaintances. <laughs> Can you name one? Pass. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Emily. Um, are we starting to see a revolution against woke media as you all you see all of these examples just falling away? I think. I think revolution is a strong word in its in this sort of like formalized fashion, but I think we're seeing accountability. We're seeing reaction. And I think the masses have been, to your point, revolting for quite some time in the form of their pocketbook, right? And what they don't or what they do read and listen to. No one reads or listens to Deadspin because they were full of crap. But now we're sort of seeing it now, I think, normalized in the marketplace. What I love is is the board of directors, their letter to all of the employees, where they said, just so you guys know, just so know we weren't shopping around. As if that matters to someone that was just fired. Yes. Like, okay, it's like having your one of your parents be like, well, she came on to me. I wasn't looking for the affair. Like, bottom line, they're out of work. But it's a good thing because at the end of the day, the 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 platforms that have been publishing these totally extremist views for that clickbait so that they could increase the ad buys, that was destructive. That destroyed families, that destroyed livelihoods. The ones we know about are the ones that gain notoriety in lawsuits and, and in, in mainstream media. But there were a lot of people that were hurt and that were maligned. And these guys just keep choking out that content. They keep getting paid for it. And now not anymore. So I, I love watching this dumpster. I won't reserve judgment. I pass judgment all the way. I'm loving this. All right. It is. Oh, Jeff, part of me is like you don't want to rejoice when people lose their jobs, except that the people who held these jobs would rejoice when people got their lives turned upside down by their crappy clickbait. Oh, hell no. I'm smoking a big, fat-ass blunt to this one. <laughs> <laughs> we smoking on dead spin pack tonight. <laughs> you know? Um, but an ancient Chinese Uber driver once told me, <laughs> go woke, go broke. Mm -hmm. OK, and what this comes back to is that there's actually no audience for their type of material. Mm -hmm. They don't exist. In fact, actually, they, they do exist. They just tend to chop off their <laughs> 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 You know, like the weird, <laughs> mentally ill people that nobody wants to be around that are teaching our children. Yeah, those are the people that are actually tuning into these media headlines. But normal people that watch Gutfeld. Thank you. We're not. <laughs> you know, people with some sanity, mm -hmm. we're not clicking on that stuff. So it's going to go broke. It's They're going to go out of business. And it's a failed strategy. And people are starting to see it manifest now. You know, it did help shows like us because we would then use them for content to just all over them. Oh, yeah. This is why I hope The View never gets canceled. Because then we're gone. We're gone. We're still trying to fill the hole that Brian Stelter left, Kat. Big hole. Yeah, it was a big hole. 
<laughs> very, very true. Where do you think, imagine you're them. Where do you go to find another job? Do you go back to school, get a degree, and go into the academia? Because what else can you do? I, right, I, I guess. I mean, you just think that we all could have seen this coming when they actually published an article trying to cancel a nine-year-old. Yeah. <laughs> a nine-year-old kid. I mean, so that was an article that was pitched, and then it went through editors, mm -hmm. and it actually was published. I would like to know, what were the pitches that were rejected? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> if that's the one that's getting through, this is actually the best that Desbin has to offer. Mm -hmm. It's actually worse than we even know. What were people offering to write that they were saying, you know what, no. So I think that as bad as we see it is, it's way worse than we even know. About. I'm trying to think, like, uh, 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 could you see, like, is your infant racist? <laughs> I guess you could just you could just go younger. I, yeah, I How don't know. How much you want to bet if you if you're at home right now and you Googled "Is your infant racist?" <laughs> that will probably someone would tell you yes. Yeah, yeah, but I bet there's an article. <laughs> yeah. Counter, counterpoint to Cat though, a lot of nine year olds are jerks and deserve to be canceled. <laughs> <laughs> and they're getting away scot free. You know, the kid at the bus stop who's like, "You should take Ozempic." Yeah. <laughs> You, if I, granted, if I were nine years old and with a group of nine-year-olds, I would come after you, Joe. <laughs> you just, you scream, please bully me, groups of children. Aww. They holler, run forest. I'm like, how have you even seen that movie? <laughs> <laughs> You're definitely racist, though. I, I, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> well, he is wearing a members-only jacket. <laughs> Yeah, you're not allowed to wear that, Hotep. It's members only. <laughs> I'm kidding. It, that's not a racist jacket. I want Joe to still get his free jackets. <laughs> <laughs> All right, up next, the VA leaves vets high and dry because they're obsessed with DEI. This is a great story. If you'll be in the New York area and would like tickets to see Gutfeld, go to foxnews.com slash gutfeld and click on the link to join our studio audience. Click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You won't get it anywhere else.